an incredible story. I'm looking forward to this one. She's here representing the Abbey community and she was born in Mount Isa, so, I mean, you know, you've got to give her a bit of credit there for a start. <laughs> she studied in Townsville and Brisbane and graduated as a primary school teacher majoring in special education. She joined the Abbey community, community sorry, 48 years ago. No, you don't look a day over 50. I don't know how that works, but anyway. And never expected to be one of the founding teachers of St Michael's College in 1983. During her life, St Sister Veronica has worn several hats as a teacher, principal, dean of pastoral care and deaconess in the Abbey Church. She's now the leader of the Abbey community. Please welcome Sister Veronica as our speaker today. Good morning, everyone. It's a real honour for me to be here today to speak about our Abbey community in Kabucha along the Bribey Island Road. In 2018, we established a multi-faith and a cultural dialogue centre with a central focus of embracing diversity and celebrating unity. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the Abbey community and share a little of our history and our journey from England to Australia. I will also talk about how faith, traditions and our commitment to an inner spiritual journey informs and guides us in our everyday life. The Abbey community is a place with a unique story. Our history is filled with people who lived a life of devotion to God while serving others. They helped create what we hope has become a lighthouse of love, spreading the message of peace and harmony to all people of cultural and faith diversities. The Abbey community maintains a leg legacy handed down to us nearly 100 years ago by our visionary founders, John and Jesse Ward. They recognised that there was a great need for change in the hearts and minds of all people. And so with their hearts full of belief and a passionate commitment that there was a higher way to live, they started to plant seeds for change and a hope for global peace. They understood that this peace could only be realised by accepting the inherent dignity of every human being, regardless of nationality, ethnic origin or religion. Underpinning this was the belief that all people are equally loved by God. Inspired by their teachings, a small nucleus of people committed to a spiritual pathway joined John and Jesse Ward to form a community. They were united by its purpose to work for global peace and were motivated by the vision for a united, peaceful and harmonious humanity. But who was this John Ward? From childhood, he was an avid collector of antiquities. His passion would continue through his life and have a significant influence on his beliefs. After completing his studies at Cambridge University, he became a teacher. In 1914, he was appointed the headmaster of a school at Ragoon in Myanmar. During his time there, he traveled widely in India and Sri Lanka, where he explored India's great religions of Hinduism and Buddhism. These would have a profound influence on his spiritual journey. Ward later ret uh, returned to England and became a leading Freemason and author, writing more than 30 books and contributing to the Encyclopedia Britannica. One of Ward's greatest achievements was to create Britain's first open air historical history museum called the Abbey Folk Park in New Barnet. 
thus north of London. It was a revolutionary concept which saw him construct a prehistoric village, huts, and a bazaar from Central Africa. He also saved historic buildings in which he displayed the artefacts collected from around the world. This remarkable blend of artefacts from both East and West became a place to understand the value of culture and faiths. He was indeed a man beyond his time. Unfortunately, at the onset of World War II, the Yaddick Folk Park was forced to close. Then, in 1945, the wards and their small community immigrated to the island of Cyprus, taking with them about 4,000 artefacts from the collection. Sadly, and as a great shock to everyone, John Ward died there five years later. The community lived, continued to live in Cyprus until the Enosis movement, which sought to end British rule and it made it unsafe for them to remain. The next chapter of their story saw the community travel by ship to Australia. They arrived in Sydney before eventually settling in Blackheath in the Blue Mountains, where they stayed until 1965. The community then moved to Queensland, finally settling on a 330-acre property that they had purchased just outside the small town of Caboolture. They called the property St Michael's. Here, they began, began the arduous task of creating a home. Some of the property was cleared and land was developed eventually into a commercial and a very productive farm. 48 years ago, in 1975, I joined the Abbey community. This was 10 years after they had settled on the property and by then there were paddocks of pumpkins being planted and rows and rows of tomatoes being picked. In those days we worked hard on the farm as well as becoming self-supporting, making our own butter and cheese from a small dairy herd. I can still remember the cheese tended to have more mould on the outside that you would find on the inside of any commercial blue vein cheese. <laughs> that said, we endeavoured to be as sustainable as possible, making our own bread, growing our own vegetables and fruit, preserving, freezing, bottling, the excess into jams, marmalades and pickles. We made church candles for the church, we had our own beehives, and we even made our own soap. Our skin is still recovering. <laughs> In those early days of humble beginnings, the community began to construct a place of worship. Recycled timber from a demolished grocery store in Caboolture was the initial timber used to build the church. Within two years, the Abbey Church was completed and dedicated to Christ the King, the King of Peace. This was done to forward the vision to work for God and for global peace. Our Abbey Church became the heart of our community life where we worshiped and prayed together. Now, 56 years later, the old weatherboard exterior is gone. The single pitched roof became three when the church was extended in 1978. And today the church stands strong with its new roof and brick exterior and a dedicated congregation and community. One of the greatest challenges for any church is to inspire faith into the next generation and build a kingdom of peace on earth. Our Abbey Church is committed to being a place of acceptance to all peoples of different faiths, denominations and world cultures without judgment and separation. 
Over the years, we have been touching and changing lives guided by our founders' vision and purpose. Many people who have come to the church or visit the church talk about the wonderful atmosphere of peace and God's presence. The Abbey community's vision is to be a vibrant centre dedicated to the well-being and spiritual enrichment of all peoples. We are striving to build a greater sense of community by celebrating the principles of unity in diversity. In 2016, the Abbey Church became actively involved with the multi-faith and multicultural communities to further our ethos. I would like to acknowledge and thank Peter Hoppe, who has been an integral part of our journey at this time. His passion, belief and commitment to the acceptance of all peoples through learning about their beliefs and respecting each other for their beliefs was unwavering. His time, efforts and assistance and many hours on the computer formulating policies, principles, constructing speakers' guides, emailing contacts, setting up meetings to put the Abbey Church on the map has been extraordinary and God had a plan sending him to us. Peter, could you stand up so we could acknowledge you, please? For several years, we travelled to Griffith University in Brisbane to attend the Centre for Interfaith and Cultural Dialogue. We met many inspiring people, built strong relations, relationships and cemented connections and friendships, joining the Queensland Faith Community Council. These years led us to realise that there was yet another chapter to unfold in the life of the Abbey community. The Abbey Church Synod made the decision to officially establish our own multi-faith and cultural dialogue centre at Caboolture. We were proud to launch the Abbey Centre on the 10th of August in 2018. I would also like to acknowledge the support and blessings of the late Venerable Master Chin Kong from Pure Land Learning College Association, and also our companion and friend, Muhammad Hanif, who has given us constant encouragement and guidance on our journey, and we thank him for walking the journey with us. Hanif, are you here? Would you like to stand, Hanif, so we can acknowledge you? We believe that we need to build community by connecting with as many people as possible, as many faiths and cultures as possible, especially in these challenging times. And we are looking forward to working in greater partnership with Pure Lands. We thank them for their valuable input in our last symposium where they presented the story of how their youth forum was established in Toowoomba. This gave us great impetus and courage to commence one in the city of Moreton Bay. We organised a symposium last October. After this successful event, a goodwill committee was formed with representatives from a variety of faith traditions, the police service, our local council, the Queensland Ethic Council and Pure Lands. The purpose of this committee is to develop a permanent youth engagement forum. We hope and pray that these young people will be empowered to build a vibrant local group within the multi-faith and cultural diversities of our region and beyond. This exciting initiative will become a reality within, with the first Youth for Youth gathering to be held on the 7th of December at North Lakes. 
We are very pleased to have our young facilitators and other interested youth here in Toowoomba today. True to our ethos, the Youth for Youth will embrace youth from a variety of faiths, ethnic and cultural backgrounds. They will be unified by the idea of building a cohesive community of civic peace and harmony. This group will take the first steps to establish good relationships between local authorities, intercultural communities and their youth organisations. We pray for active engagement by these young people and the effective sustainability of their programs and activities. This will be youth empowerment in action. Another aspect of the Abbey's community work is our school called St Michael's College. It has provided education and opportunity to countless students since opening in 1984 with just an enrolment of four to its current enrolment of 380 students. The college has a dedicated pastoral care curriculum and an RE program which promotes a deep understanding of unity in diversity. The young children in our early learning centre and our primary school students learn about different faiths and cultures throughout their educational journey with us. We believe that this immersion will engender in our students understanding, acceptance and respect for all giving them a foundation for shaping and strengthening Australia's peaceful, multicultural identity. We hope and pray that they will carry this understanding with them into their high school years and into their future lives. Finally, I would like to mention the Abbey Museum. The legacy of the Abbey Folk Park is embedded in the work of our museum. This is where a place where this is a place where creeds, cultures and faiths as part of the human story are told through the artifacts on display. The museum displays objects of great beauty inspired by faith and belief. It also reminds us though of the distractions, wars and hatred caused by religious intolerance and judgment. John Ward believed that by learning from the past, we can create a better future. The museum seeks to inspire and educate and to enrich people's lives from the stories created from its collection. In conclusion, the Abbey community is a dedicated group of people who are committed to spreading a to spreading acceptance to all in our world today. I do hope that you've enjoyed this window into our life and work of our community, which overarches our four entities, our farm, our church, our museum and our college. We, like many other groups, are working to build a brighter future for all by living consciously, with love and respect of others, and in celebration of our oneness. Let us all be light bearers and bring peace and harmony on earth. Thank you. Yes, give her another round. That was quite exceptional. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that was an amazing story. It reminded me of a quote that Margaret Mead once said, never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. And I think, I don't know about you guys, but there's an example of that. So give her another round. That was absolutely brilliant.